Gabby Petito, Brian Laundrie, Part 12, Analysis, The Restaurant Argument. Those of you who've been following this story will be aware of the disclosure that came about an argument that took place involving Brian Laundrie at a Wyoming restaurant. I have listened to the original video footage that was uploaded by an Instagrammer by the name of Nina Sali Angelo, who had explained in a series of videos that she witnessed Gabby Petito and Brian Laundry get into an explosive argument at a Jackson, Wyoming restaurant. It took place at the Merry Piglet restaurant on August the 27th. Now, with regard to the video footage that's provided, at the time, Miss um, Angelo was a little excitable, shall we say, and one has to extract what she has to say from the various oh my gods and Matt wasn't really interested, Matt being her boyfriend and so like, to discern the meat of what she essentially says. I've listened to it and watched it and she repeats numerous times the essence of what was occurring. In short, she didn't know what the altercation was about and she basically saw a very angry Brian Laundry and an upset Gabby Petito, and the altercation was with the staff. News outlets have also reported on this, and, for example, ABC Eyewitness News has a written report that explains that the Blue Collar Restaurant Group confirmed to ABC News on Wednesday that they believe Petito and Laundry were at their Merry Piglet restaurant on August the 27th. Miss Angelo says Laundry was screaming at the hostess and Petito was in tears and apologising. It looked as though they were like almost getting kicked out, Angela told ABC News. It wasn't necessarily between them, it was more so Gabby abruptly leaving the restaurant crying and Brian was just evidently really upset, pissed off I would say. I would say Gabby was upset, he was angry and he was just being very temperamental towards the restaurant staff. Angelo said that Petito was crying and Laundry kept walking in and out of the restaurant. He was just like going in on the hostess, and the waitress, and then eventually the manager. He exited and entered the restaurant on four different occasions within five minutes, she said. He would walk out, walk in again, walk out, walk back in. At one moment we thought that they had walked out for good, or he had walked out for good and he'd actually left for like 10 minutes and then came back just to start the fight all over again. Angelo said Laundry was very visibly angry and Petito seemed distraught. She seemed really upset. She was emotional. She was crying. She seemed kind of embarrassed. At one point, she walks back into the restaurant on one of his attempts to walk back and I think she followed him and was trying to, I think, get him to leave and, like, drop the situation. I think she was being apologetic towards the restaurant staff for his behaviour, like she just wanted to diffuse the situation. She was like, I'm sorry, come on, just let's go. But she was visibly upset, Angelo said. Angelo said she felt very bad for Petito in that moment and freaked out by Laundry's behaviour. So, in essence... This eyewitness of account of the argument that took place at the Merry Piglet at Wyoming Restaurant, what does that tell us in terms of understanding the behaviour through the lens of narcissism? As you know, Laundry is a narcissist. But also, what might it tell us with regard to what this meant for Gabby Petito? Let's start with Laundry. As you will know from my earlier analysis of the body cam footage, and if you've embraced my work more widely, as you ought to be doing, you know that a narcissist needs four things. Control, fuel, character traits and residual benefits. Control and fuel are the most important aspects of that. You'll also know, from what I've explained, that laundry is an unaware narcissist. He doesn't know that his narcissism drives him 
in order to seek those four things. He will know that he's doing certain things, for example, because he wants to punish somebody. He knows that he's losing his temper, but he doesn't know what's actually driving it. That's the nature of the type of narcissist that he is, because he's unaware. His narcissism, in effect, doesn't allow him to know the true, real, and genuine reason as to why he's behaving as he is. So, what happened in that restaurant? Well, quite simply, something, and more notably, someone, has threatened Ryan Laundrie's need for control. He hasn't seen it as a threat to control, but somebody has done something. It might be, for example, that he felt he was overcharged, or that the service was too slow, or that somebody just said something that he didn't like. Maybe a male waiter looked at his girlfriend in a way that caused him to feel jealous. Perhaps it was the case that he felt that the food wasn't up to the quality that it ought to be. Perhaps he was pushing a boundary in some respect, asking for more of something when he ought not to be, and was told he couldn't have it. As it stands, I'm not aware of anybody from the restaurant that has spoken publicly about what actually precipitated his reaction, but it could be any one of those things. But any one of those things amounts to this, a threat to Brian Laundry's control. The relevant person, presumably the hostess, will have given challenge fuel. She'll have said something and done something towards Brian Laundry, which gave him fuel, but challenged him in some way. Either told him he wasn't allowed to do something, denied him something, criticised him in some way. That threatens Laundry's unconscious need for control. His narcissism, needing to assert control and nullify the threat, kicks into action by igniting his fury. And because of the type of narcissist that he is, he will often react with heated fury. Therefore, he erupts. His narcissism makes him feel furious to drive him to take action to assert control over the person that's seen as being a threat, and of course to draw fuel from them by their reaction. His narcissism also causes him to believe a particular set of circumstances, and this is often linked to the paranoia of the narcissist. So, for example, it may well have him believing that somebody was hitting on his girlfriend, or that he was being disrespected, or that this person was being rude to him, obstructive, unhelpful, etc. And therefore, in those circumstances, his narcissism causes him to feel the fury and believe that somebody's done something wrong and that he needs to do something about it. So he erupts, and of course, the application of heated fury, insult, shouting, intimidation, bullying, will have been directed at the host. The impression I gain is, of course, that he then did not achieve that control directly. Remember, the narcissism has to assert control on behalf of the narcissist, neither does so directly, indirectly, or through withdrawal. It chooses direct to begin with because this is essentially double bubble. We gain control and fuel from you, two of the prime aims. So his narcissism directed him to try and assert control over the hostess. He failed. She perhaps resisted him, said, I can't help him. No, I'm not doing that. She might have even argued back. And therefore, his narcissism in the unconscious said, we don't have control over this appliance, this particular person. It would have looked to have caused him to assert control indirectly. And usually, that's where the narcissist turns to the spouse, the boyfriend, the girlfriend, a friend or a family member and say, can you believe the way that this arsehole is talking to me? That wasn't available to him. Because logically, the only person that he could look to garner support from was... Gabby Petito. And Gabby Petito doesn't want anything to do with it. She, not being a narcissist, recognises that his behaviour is not only disproportionate to the situation that she finds them in, but also is unpleasant, wrong and downright disgusting. She's embarrassed, as the eyewitness says. It upsets her. And I'll return in a moment to why it upsets her. She isn't able to provide indirect control for laundry. So his narcissism then shunts to the third assertion of control, withdrawal, and he storms out of the restaurant. And those of you that have had an involvement with the narcissist will be familiar with the flounce, the strop, the storming off. That's the assertion of control by withdrawal. 
by Laundry removing himself, and he's doing this in an unaware fashion, by him removing himself from the threat to control, namely the non-compliant hostess, it gives him in the unconscious a sensation of control, that he is now the one who is in control. And therefore, in those circumstances, that enables him to feel that control has been obtained. So why was he walking back in? Well, a number of reasons, but they link to the hostess and the restaurant coming back on his radar. He was probably walking around outside because Petito was sat on the sidewalk crying. He didn't immediately vacate the area, and he will, may well have turned and seen the hostess or the relevant waitress inside. As soon as that person comes back on his radar, his narcissism in the unconscious asks this question. Is this person under control? Answer, no. Therefore, his narcissism says, you need to go and assert control. Of course, it doesn't tell him that. It again causes the ignition of fury. It again causes him to believe that this person is goading him, that this person needs to be set straight, that this person has done him injustice. So in order to assert control, he storms back into the restaurant and attempts to assert control directly. This behaviour, of course, upsets Miss Petito even further because she sees him getting all worked up and irate. He goes in, he seeks unconsciously to assert control directly over the hostess, over the waitress, over the manager. He starts giving it a bit of Karen action by asking to speak to the manager. And none of these trio will give him the control that he seeks. Therefore, his narcissism shunts to indirect, can't do it that way, takes him back to withdrawal. He walks out again. He goes outside, and it might be Gabby Petito says, please, just leave them alone, let's go. As soon as she says that, please leave them alone, they're back on the radar. His narcissism asks in the unconscious, are they under control? No, they are not. So he storms back in again, driven by his narcissism. And what's basically happening is he asserts, tries to assert control directly and fails. He achieves control by withdrawal, but because something or somebody is causing the restaurant staff to come back on his radar, and because he doesn't have control over them, that compels him to go back in again to try and assert that control. Another narcissist might have just gone, fuck them, they're all assholes, and then walked away from the restaurant, but not him. His narcissism drove him to go back into the restaurant for the purpose of seeking to assert control. And so we had this back and forth. In he goes to assert control, he fails, the narcissism pulls him away to assert control by withdrawal. Then on the outside, he either sees the staff or Gabby Petito mentions them, or they just pop into his head, and therefore the process starts again. He has to assert control, he storms back in, back and forth, back and forth, until eventually they leave, whereby his narcissism has probably decided on his behalf, no point going back in, assert control by completely walking away, muttering under your breath that there are souls. Now, that is what this witness saw. The repeated explosion of ignited fury by a narcissist, driving him to assert control over three tertiary sources, hostess, waitress, and the manager. But he failed. It then pulled him away. They came back up on the radar. That sent him back in again. Then he came back out again, and then he went back in again, and so on and so forth. The argument wasn't with Gabby Petito. She was compliant because she was largely just crying and staying out of the way. She, of course, may well have threatened control by saying, Brian, please just leave it. Her saying that is perceived by his narcissism as her telling him what to do, which is then a threat to control. He will then say to her, shut up, sit down, I'm sorting this out. She's brought them back up on the radar, which causes him to storm back in. Gabby Petito was crying for two reasons. One, she didn't like witnessing this distressing scene of him erupting and shouting at people. It embarrassed her and upset her. Unfortunately for Gabby Petito, this was something that she repeatedly experienced, not only at the hands of Brian Laundrie, but with regard to other individuals that she has had involvement with. And I'll be touching on that in later episodes of this series, so you understand what has made Gabby Petito the way that she is and made her so susceptible to a manipulator such as Brian Laundrie. 
The second reason that Gabby Petito was crying was because she knew what was coming. She had been subjected, as the victims of our kind invariably are, to repeated devaluing behaviours. She will have had, because she was in the sustained devaluation period, repeated accusations of her being a nutcase, that you're OCD, that you're too controlling, that you're needy, you're a crybaby, you don't do this, you do this wrong, you've got a stupid little blog, you're just an airhead, get the fuck away from me. All of those types of things. Shouted at, denigrated, belittled, invalidated, insulted, intimidated and bullied. She will have had hundreds of incidents of that nature going back over a number of months, even possibly years, dependent upon the length of the sustained devaluation so far prior to her death. She knew what was coming in the post. She knew that as a consequence of him kicking off with his staff, that he would, get, he would take it out on her later. Because he'd have to. Because the wait staff wouldn't back down. And therefore, although he stormed out, each time he, she might mention it about, please just calm down, it would resurrect the event in his head. And therefore, the sensation of lack of control would reappear, although he wouldn't realise that's what it is. And then that would cause him to respond by smearing the staff to her, but doing so in an angrily way, and possibly rounding on her, fat lot of fucking help you were, you didn't stand up for me, you didn't back me up, you just let them roll over you, you're so weak and pathetic, God knows what I'm doing on this trip with you, I wish I'd never come, Christ, all you'll do is put your nose in your computer and write about your blog. I know that those of you who've been involved with narcissists will recognise such a scenario full well. And therefore, Gabby Petito's distress was based upon not only what she was witnessing, but what she knew would be happening for possibly the next few hours, maybe even the remainder of the day. A furious fiancé, who repeatedly would be going on about it, and then rounding on her also. The day was ruined already. And that was what she was experiencing. Of course, none of the staff, and certainly not Miss Angelo, would know precisely what was going on here. But this, a further episode of what has been going on between Gabby Petito, Brian Laundry, and the other people, provides us with a brilliant opportunity to analyse the narcissistic dynamic so that you are not only understand the mindset of Brian Laundry and his interactions with other people, but to enable you to understand narcissism more generally. I know that you're finding all of this material extremely helpful. I'm glad that it is. Please share your appreciation by liking the video and sharing it with other people so news of this excellent content is spread as far as possible. This is important to me as part of building my legacy. It is important to you as empathic individuals to educate and protect other people. It's a win-win scenario. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.